kid that I was guarding him to gave me a dragon when he was about 13 years old. He said that he didn't want it, but he did want it. He said he said that if I would take it to the radio studio when I did the radio program, he would always protect me. So I took the dragon, because I couldn't throw him away either, and brought him and put him in front of me on the console. When I did television, he was on one of the cameras or on the producer's desk. He was always there for every broadcast. I could always look up and see the dragon. And when I was on the radio, I could not only see the dragon and I'd have to look up, I could reach over and pick him up and hold him in my hand and squeeze him if I got mad at a collar. The good thing about a rubber dragon, you can squeeze it and it stays intact. When I was doing the broadcast in Seattle, a masked man came into the studio. He was armed with a spoon, dressed in all black with a red mask. It was scary. And the spoon, I mean, do you know how many people are killed every year by a spoon? He kidnapped it, the dragon. I was devastated. I was also short on calls that day, so I carried on for the entire broadcast about my dragon who had been abducted. People all over Seattle started looking for the dragon. They finally found him by the kingdom. The dragon had now become married, and there were two dragons. So I put them on the console, both of them. I let them touch each other. And for the rest of my career, the dragons remained in the studio when I did a broadcast. After I retired in 2000, the dragons disappeared, and I wanted them. I wanted to put them on the console by the ham radio. I wanted, I wanted to be able to hold them when I was talking to people on the ham radio. I wanted to have them with me when I did YouTube videos. And lo and behold, I opened a box, and there be the two dragons, together still, hidden in a box. Well, they're unboxed, and now they're with me to do my videos. I just want to talk a little bit about the... Uh, discrimination going on today and how things are changing. I don't want to get started on the Supreme Court, but when you really think about it, it's stacked politically by Republicans and Democrats. We're on the verge of a civil war. I mean, I won't even talk to a Republican. I don't even bother to waste my time commenting a reply to their garbage when they write me. I treat them about the same as I treat a Mormon when they come to the front door to try to fill me up with their strange, bizarre hatred and that kind of thing. I just pretend they don't exist. Sort of like the ostrich in the middle of a battlefield with bullets flying in all directions, sticking their head in the sand. I just want to throw out three points real quick. Three things that I would say if we met. First, John and Mary just got married file that one away. Phil and Steve just got married. Or how about Mary and Donna just got married? Each one of those, you get a different reaction. It's very strange. When you think about John and Mary, I'm going to tell you what you thought. When you think about John and Mary, you think about them having children in a, in a family and living happily ever after, like the Donna Reed show on television. When you think about Phil and Steve, you think about dirty sex, things going where they shouldn't go. And when you think about Mary and Donna, you think, well, it, my aunts used to do that. It's kind of weird, but women are that way. But you had a different reaction to each one of those things, when in reality, the key ingredient is a very Christian thing, love. You see, Phil and Steve can love just as well as John and Mary, and Mary and Donna. You somehow have marriage connected and fit only with sex when it comes to people of the same sex getting married. See, not to be a biblical quoter, but it does say, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. If you want to make judgment, and throw stones. You're on very thin ice. A loving God may have allowed Phil and Steve to get married because the loving God understands that there has to be a balance on the planet of the number of people that are here. 
So we have two we have two alternatives. Alternative A, Phil and Steve do not form a loving relationship, and instead Phil goes out with Donna and can't love her, but they pro they procreate and a child is born to live with one parent or toss to the other parent back and forth. Or again, the other alternative, there's several here, is abortion. That's to rip the baby out of the mother's womb. The doctor said he reached in and the baby's little fingers grasped around his finger as he killed it. Abortion is definitely bad. I think two people having a loving relationship is better than abortion, and it solves our population problem. Why can't we find simple answers to problems that God understands? The other thing is this Zimmerman. I'm concerned. You see, they're telling us you can't tell anything by a voice with a waveform analyzer. This junk science. I've looked at waveform analyzers all my life, and I can tell you one voice from another. So since we can't trust a waveform analyzer to analyze that voice, the high-pitched voice of that screaming, screaming big guy, Zimmerman, I suggest, if I were the attorney, I would have the judge and three or four of those deputy dudes take Zimmerman out onto the sidewalk in front of the courthouse and pound his head into the curb and then let him use his girly scream. Let's hear, let's hear it, huh? We can't hear we can't hear Trayvon's because he's dead. But we could certainly hear Zimmerman. And we want to see Zimmerman hold a steady tone. Ah oh, when his head's being pounded onto a curb. I want to see how he did that, because that's pretty complicated. I cannot even pound on my chest without there being a difference in my voice. Is it because I teach speech I think about these things? I don't know. I'm going to end the video with a saying from a poem that I've always remembered, thinking about Phil and Steve and John and Mary and Mary and Donna. Love. No word in all of history was as powerful or as frail as this, if you'll excuse me.